Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. It's good to be here with you again. So we're going to check about the platform first, of course. So this is the class of today. And uh, you see that the question is over there. So for tonight, there is no homework, but just remember that we need to move on with that one. Okay, and of course, we are going to check the attendance. I see that just a few people are here, but I hope the rest of the people can join. So, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, so we are going to start and uh, we're gonna check some things here. So, Perfect, Ada. Got you here. Okay, so this is the class of today, how to measure the effects of training programs. This is like a little introduction that I found. So seven innovative ways to measure training effectiveness. Number one is visual proof. What do you think is this about? Maybe when you can see the results. Definitely, you right? Not just measure, and so you can see the results with the team. Right. Nice, so that is it. So you will be able to, to see that the change or that the skills that you taught to the people, actually they are, they are working on that one. So good. measure with XAPI, do you know what is that? The same as KPI. Exactly, with some metrics, right? Some ratios that you will be able to identify if something is getting improved. Good. Measure software adoption. What is that? Mm, the way how the trainee um, use the tools that we're providing the training, maybe? Something like that, actually. The only difference is that they use a software to measure that one. So they see how is the evolution of that. Good. Measure while doing. What is that? Evaluate uh, or or like, like the word said, measure while uh, the training is um, is deliver something like that not just at the end so okay, you can yeah. you can you can identify if you if you can fix or or adapt or, okay. or do some change uh, uh, in the middle of the training maybe 
very good actually that is it i mean measure what you're doing and also it's possible not only through the training but also whenever a person is in the process of the work and then you can check if they have adapted the things that you have taught. right good number five analyze training and performance how you what do you understand on this Um, I think it could be um, review uh, how the training is going versus um, the plan or the, the KPA that you um, definite before. Okay, very good. So analyze uh, and train performances like when you analyze the training, if do you remember that yesterday we were checking that companies that deliver training, they need to know uh, or to understand the industry to understand your needs, and then they will be able to to provide a good training. So you need to analyze the training itself and the performance of the training with the people. The number six is one of the most common feedback and survey. What is that? when um, when the department of um, of the training programs ask for feedback about uh, the trainees what uh, what the employees uh, think about the, the the trainee very good that is it so it's like very basic right a survey or when they ask, uh, what did you think about the training and you provide your feedback. And uh, well, the other one is just an evaluation that is for four levels that we're going to check later on today. So we're gonna check into that right now. Actually, we're gonna start checking on that one, how to measure training effectiveness. And uh, this is what we're gonna read about says, um, let's see, Anna Claudia, could you please help me read in the first part? Sure, I'm sorry, I couldn't take off the mute. Okay, no. um, um, the number one? Uh, everything, which says when you plan training. Ah, okay. When you plan training and development for your organization, you expect to gain improved skills and productivity, greater retention rates, and an improvement, an improved brand after you deliver any type of corporate training, you must ask this question. Number one, how effective was the training in helping learners gain relevant knowledge and skills? Two, were the learners able to apply what they learned to improve their performance at work? Number three, what other benefits did the training program achieve? The answers to this question help you to determine whether the training was worth your organization's investment and answering these questions requires measuring the outcomes. Very good. What did you get from this? Uh, totally agree because uh, that is like the three most important questions. How effective was the training in helping learners? We are uh, facing this situation right now in our our account because now new employees uh, they were trained by the Pakistani trainers and it's totally different the way how they conduct or how they uh, perform the training uh, besides how people here in Latin uh, make it because we understand the, the, the Hispanic customer and also the, the American one. So they have a different view and that created like a kind of confusion in different processes. We are facing that. And so in this case, for example, question two, in our company, we are facing that the, the, the learners, uh, they weren't able to apply all what they were supposed to know when they were in the first day 
making and taking calls. It was kind of frustrating for them. They still ex express that today. We every day have a meeting with all the all of us, all of, all of our team, and always they are complaining about that. Mm -hmm. So it's important to to measure and to find out in both ways if the trainees were able to learn what it was supposed to to learn and on the other hand if the trainers were capable or were able and if the investment the company made it worth or not because in case it's not working it's necessary to look for other providers perfect yeah actually you're so right we need to we need to measure right it's not just a matter mm -hmm. for us to deliver the training but because we we know there are some needs but mm -hmm. also, I mean, these three questions, as you say, are the most important whenever you, you provided a training. How effective was the training in helping learners gain relevant knowledge? I mean, mm -hmm. something that is actually important for the needs that the company has. So mm -hmm. definitely that is very important. And uh, were they able to apply? Mm -hmm. So that is, of course, something that we need to measure. And uh, is there any other benefit or... For example, the, as you say, the investment was the money, the, the investment relation, the cost relation with the benefit, right? So mm -hmm. very good. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So let's check into that one. Uh, the next one is going to be for Giselle, please. Okay. What are training evaluation metrics? When it comes to training, you want to be sure that you are getting the most of your investment. That's why it's important to track the evaluation metrics of your training program. Evaluation metrics can tell you a lot about how well your training is working, and they can help you make changes and improvements as needed. There are a number of different evaluation metrics that you can track, and the ones you use will depend on your specific training program. Some common evaluation metrics include participant satisfaction, learning outcomes, behavior changes, and performance improvements. Good. What did you get from this one? Um, that at the same, like when you uh, choose the correct program or the correct training, you have to choose the correct metrics. Because if you choose wrong, you never know if the if the trainee uh, is actually working. So it's very important to identify uh, or set the goals and what and what uh, you you want to to measure, and then you can choose the the correct yeah. metrics. Very good. Yeah, actually, that is something that is linked, as you see, as in any process, you know, whenever you are managing a company, right? So everything is linked. So at the beginning, we need to check and identify the needs of training, what the employees want, what do we need them to know, and then we identify the method, then we identify the provider, and then we identify the evaluation. But everything is linked. Everything has to be done before you actually provide the training. So you, before you actually get somebody to to deliver the training, you need to to be aware of which is going to be the best way to evaluate that training. So it's important that. And there are some. They they mentioned some of those here, but we're going to check into those. I don't see any word that we can check into that one. So uh, Francisco Eduardo, could you please help uh, with the next one? Hey teacher. Um, is why are corporate training and uh, metric important, right teacher? That is correct. Okay. Training evaluation metric are important because they help organization measure the effectiveness of the training program by tracking data such as employee satisfaction, 
knowledge retention and skill improvement. Business can identify, identify. areas where they need to improve their training method, method and make sure that their employees are getting the most of all their education. Ultimate, ultimately, this health organization achieve their business goals by ensuring that their employees are properly trained and equipped Keep it to their, your, to their job. Good. So, what did you get from this? Um, uh, the the problem say the important for the the training metric. Uh, I think is is uh, is a uh, uh, a good uh, tools. Right, Tishan? A good tool for um, measure the, the different different areas. Um, the the most important uh, I think is um, a employee satisfaction, uh, notely uh, retention, and a skill improvement uh, because uh, if a uh, uh, training uh, is a uh, don uh, how do you say cumplir los objetivos teacher to to reach the goals you can say to reach the goal uh, if uh, a training don't uh, reach the the goal the goals uh, it's time to uh, make change for uh for the way uh, the phone the way uh, the correct way uh that the the knowledge uh, uh come to the employees very good yes actually that is so true and well everything can be measured right you know that every single thing that we do uh, can be measured right? remember that the difference between any number and an a, a KPI is because uh, those are key, key indicators. So are something that lets you know if the business is going well. And this is one thing that definitely we need to implement whenever we are going to provide training or to get somebody to provide training for this one. So definitely something that we need to consider. So whenever we're going to be in charge of delivering a training. Good, uh, what is to track? Anybody? Maybe to follow? Maybe. Monitoring. Uh -huh, or moni more monitoring in this case. Monitoring. Good, monitor or follow up. Very good, nice. What is, there was another one, let me see. Okay, remember that the pronunciation on this one is equipped. Okay, and that's it. So how to measure training effectiveness? Let's see. Um, Me. I'm sorry? Me. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, how to measure training effectiveness? Just like anything else in life, you need to be able to measure the effectiveness of your training in order to know if it's meeting your goals. You can use a variety of evaluation metrics to do this. In general, these metrics can be divided into two categories, learner outcomes and process measures. Learner outcomes are what you're hope, hoping to achieve with your training, such as increased productivity or better customer service. Process measures track things like how much they learn and how engaged they, how engaged they were in the training. There are a number of different evaluation metrics you can use to measure learner outcomes, such as tests, test scores, course completion rates, job satisfaction, and task performance. Process measures can include things like hours, hours, hours of training completed, trainer satisfaction, and participant engagement. 
the evaluation metrics you use will the evaluate the evaluation metrics you use will depend on your specific training goals and the type of training you're delivering. However, it's important to use a mix of both types of metrics to get a well-rounded view of your training effectiveness. Good, what did you get from this one? Um, okay, In a, when, when you deliver or when you are uh, taking a course or a training, uh, you can measure all uh, the things that you are um, teaching, um, like teaching, okay? Or uh, on the other hand, that you are learning, okay? Um, there, are, there are two types or two categories, learner outcomes and process measures. Let a, learner outcomes is, or are um, all the things that are related um, directly with, the performance of the employee in the uh, in the in the environment, okay, like uh, better behavior, more uh, attention to to their tasks, or something like that. And process measures, uh, it's are, are related with uh, the effect effectiveness of of the productivity. I don't know if it's correct. Yeah. Productive effectiveness. I think it's it's better, okay? Productive effectiveness, okay? So um, those those are the 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 two categories that the the reading that the reading says. Um, <clears throat> uh, another thing in process measures, uh, they talk about uh, hours of training, okay? In order to uh, uh, to divide a, a course or a training into different steps on, or onto different or into different levels, in order to uh, done uh, in order to your people or to to your trainees are not uh, bo bo get bored with the with the training, okay? And uh, these kind of things, uh, I think it's better because. Uh, you can track step by step uh, um, all the progress, okay? Uh, for, for example, this month you will take a, a course, a, a basic course of, of anything, okay? Um, and we will track you uh, through the three or, or through the two next months. If you are doing the things better, uh, obviously, you can uh, conclude, yeah, conclude. You can conclude that the training is, or, or the training was satisfied to the, to your people. Uh -huh. And uh, this could be a, a flag to, uh, to pass to the other level, okay? Or to, um, uh, to tell the trainee, hey, okay, you are uh, good in this level, so you are ready to go to the next step or the next level. I think it's uh, uh, it's it's the it, it's the best because if uh, if the longer if I don't know how to say if if the training is. Um, Muy largo. Too long. Some, too long. Uh -huh. the, the attention could be uh, lost and the effectiveness or the productivity could be uh, a stay over there. Okay. Not, not, a, not implementing a, all the knowledge at all, only the things that they could be important. Okay. I, I think this will be uh, related to the to the reading. Okay, definitely. Yes, actually, it was a very good wrap up and analysis of the reading. Yes, uh, you need to measure the effectiveness of training, and there are two like groups, two categories: uh, the learner outcomes and the process measures. And at the end, it says that probably the best option is to mix both types of metrics. Right. So you have a very good measurement of the training. So, 
Very good, Per. Thank you, Juan Miguel. Okay. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, I don't think there are many words here. Let's see. I mean, sometimes I want to ask you words that I know that you know, but I want you to explain it. But I like the same words that we were checking. So, yeah. Uh, well, well rounded view. What is this? I don't know how to say, but I think it's the whole picture of, of a thing. Okay. Very good. So 160 it's 160 like, degrees. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So that is it. It's something like to see the, the whole, all the points of view from something, right? So very good. And then it says, when to use an employee training assessment. Uh, Yvonne, could you please help me with this part? Okay. When to use an employee training assessment. It's important to know when and how to assess employee training. Without proper assessment, you can determine whether your employees are learning, are learning the material and meeting your company's standards. Fortunately, there are a number of evaluation metrics you can use to measure employee training effectiveness. One common metric is post-training job performance. This measures how well employees perform their new tasks after completing training. Another common metric is quiz scores or other form to assess. By reviewing quiz results, you can see how well employees grasp the material. You can also measure employee satisfaction with training. This can be done when surveys are interviews. Employee satisfaction tells you whether your employees feel they are getting the most of, of training and whether they believe it is helping them meet their goals. Finally, you can measure how much training has improved employees' performance. This can be done by comparing pre and post training data. By looking at improvement rates, you can see which type of training are most effective. Pretty good, perfect. What did you get from this? Um, well, this point I think is so common in trainings, uh, for example, in my company, when you receive the training, at the end, you have to prepare a project, a graduation project, uh, in your area or in your or in the in the company, and you have to present uh, at the end what's your project, what is the process, uh, what is the the game, or what you in, what you improve at the end of that project, and in the in that way, uh, the company or maybe the person that uh, gives you the training can evaluate uh, your new knowledge, uh, how you can apply the, that knowledge uh, or in, in, your, in, your, in your job to improve your skills or what is the benefit for the, for the company with that kind of training. And the other common way is make, um, at the end of the, of the training, you can present an exam, answer uh, some questions, or maybe solve some problems or some situations. And in that way, you can evaluate uh, if the employee um, uh, can um, 
improve uh, some of the skills and that is the benefit for the company. Very good, perfect. Yes, uh, your feedback was very, very accurate actually. And presenting a project is one of the best options, I guess. Maybe uh, some employees might be afraid of that one the very first time, but whenever they are able to provide that one, they, they worry, you know, you know uh, that is very good because when you say at the beginning of the training, okay, we're going to deliver this training and you need to present a project. So they pay attention. They are more focused. That is like when you say that there's going to be a test at the end of the, of the training, right? If you say, well, this is the training and this is the topic. And at the end, we're going to make a test. Oh, everybody pays attention, right? Because they want to do the best in the exam. <laughs> Anyways, that is like a, like a tool for you, the trainer or the uh, company, to be sure that everybody's going to pay attention and they are going to do their best. If you say, no, there is no evaluation and you just gather whatever you want, oh man, that, that is going to be different, definitely. Good, let's see if we can find some words here. As I was telling you, uh, there are almost the same words. What is weather? is like um, an option is between something or, or another something. Very good. It's when you are going to present two options, right? What is a quiz? It's like an assessment. It's an assessment that is not that long, right? It's kind of short. And uh, let's see. Teacher. Yeah. Sorry, teacher, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, the, the, um, the other word, weather, um, I'm not clear at all. Uh, what are the two options in the, in, the, in, the, in the paragraph or in the phrase? You can determine whether your employees are learning the material and meeting your company's standard. The, those are the two phrases. That is correct. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That is it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's see any other time I might find. Mm, I don't think there is any other. Okay. Teacher, the right pronunciation of fort fortunately, I don't know, is that correct? Yeah, uh, in which paragraph is that one? I don't remember. In the first para paragraph, in the third, uh, yeah. That's fortunately. 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 Uh, fortune. Remember that in English is very easy. I mean, for example, you are going to split the word. The first part there is fortune, like the word fortune. And the mm -hmm. other one is uh, like, uh, fortune eightly. So fortunately. Eightly, uh -huh. Fortunately. Fortunately. That would be the best option. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, good. So the next one says, why measure training effectiveness? So Danny, could you please help us with this? Yeah, sure. Um, why measure uh, training effectiveness? Uh, statistics, stats, statistics, prove, statistics. statistics prove that companies across the globe invest heavily in employee training and development. According to Statista, employee training and education spent in the United States alone grew to 42.4 billion by the year 2020. In addition to enhancing knowledge and skills, measuring training effectiveness has proven, have, has proven to be an important tool to boost employee engagement and retention, result and measurement of past training also act as critical indicators while, while planning future workshops. Organizations should ensure that employees can demonstrate a positive impact of training through improved productivity and overall skill development. 
with the growing focus on continual learning and development, business are keen on identifying reliable metrics and methods to measure the training effectiveness and the ROI of such employee training initiatives. After all, you will not want to deliver training that does not provide expect results. Very good. What did you get from this one? Well, um, the first part uh, is is related to to the um, the amount of the uh, the United States um, has to spend in the. The company of the United States has spent in, in, in training um, according to a statista. Um, and then um, it says that, <clears throat> um, that the, you have to, to measure the effectiveness um, of the training because you, you want to you want to know uh, if the training method or, or the training that you are, um, um, how can I say, that you have um, implement implement are are um, are going to achieve the 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 goal that you have set uh, before. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes. Why? Because it's important, right? I mean, it's important. We know that uh, whenever you invest money in training people, the results should be better. People are going to be happier, confident about their job. They are going to stay in the company. You are going to decrease the attrition. I mean, there are many benefits of this, right? We have checked that before. Let's check some words. Statistics. What is that? Um, so it's like it's like <laughs> the it's like the um the well mathematic or the or the part of mathematic that studies the um the history of number <laughs> very good perfect statistics is that one is the part the branch of math that shows you analysis of things that happened in the past, trends, history about something in numbers and graphics and things like that. So, oh, I love statistics. It's one of the of my favorite things yeah. in the world. Statistics, Excel, ah, it's amazing. Yeah. And anyway. <laughs> yeah, that uh, in that site, a uh, uh, statista is is very good for the for show. Uh, oh, data visualization. <laughs> that is true. That is something that you yeah. can uh, implement. So you, it's going to be easier for you to adapt information so you can visualize that in a better way, right? Yeah. What Good. tool? Sorry. Statista. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Statista is, is a company or something like that, right? Yeah. That yeah. show you a very good data in a very good way and very good visualization. That is it, it's very good. Okay, what is across, across the universe? Around. Around. Well, mm -hmm. if we're talking about the globe, the world, it can be similar to around. Across over. is- Where's the globe? Over, mm -hmm. yeah all over the place, right? Very good. What is heavily? Um, it's like um, something very strong, something like that. Good, very strong, something that is, has a lot of something, right? Good. What is development? Mm. 
to in this context to get to better uh-huh to get better uh, all the the workforce in this okay. case very good it's like a process like right, for you to go to a goal to develop something to reduce the gaps very good to reduce the gaps nice what is a uh, grew the pass of grow the pass of grow that is like the way that something is expanding right in my 42.4 billion dollars only in one year only in training that is a lot of money only in the united states only in the united states so that shows how important is training right is is something that you must do i mean at least uh, over the year maybe you have to get like at least four or five trainings at least right let's see enhancing what is to enhance to emphasize i don't know it's the word the better. Right word. Uh -huh. very good to okay yeah it's like intensify something like that one right emphasize so, yeah. emphasize okay good uh -huh. let's see what else uh proven what is proven the past i think past participle of proof i don't know proof. <laughs> so i'm sorry tested something tested. that had been tested very good so you have proof of something right mm -hmm. good and what is boost up <laughs> get better yeah to energize and like and you add, add something when you add something uh, to other thing in order to get better or to get big or get bigger uh -huh. perfect in the, video, in the video games you have many things that boost you <laughs> exactly. you yeah. take something and, and take it and you are yeah. boost right so you are ready yeah. to fight again <laughs> that is true or it's uh, like in real life right when you get your cup of coffee you're boost yeah that's good okay like elixir <laughs> yeah something like for you too get better skills for you to do something uh, what is something that is critical important or very important very important key right uh, let's see what is to demonstrate to show something to prove something very good nice what is something that is reliable something achievable trust trust, trust. trustable very good nice okay let's move on evaluating training effectiveness this is going to be for raymond Hello, Ramon, are you here with us? Not possible. Okay, Jose Rivas, can you please help us with this? Yes, thank you. Okay. So let's see. Evaluating training effectiveness, right? Yep. Okay, post training quizzes, one to one discussion, employee survey, participants, case studies, and official certification exams are some ways to make sure training effectiveness. The more data you collect, um, make sure measurable outcomes, to easier it will be to quantify your company's return or investment. Before training begins, it's helpful to plan what factor you will be measuring and how you will collect this data. Fortunately, 
some proven metal, metal methodologies for measuring training effectiveness already exist. Very good, perfect. So what did you get from this? Okay, let's see. So that, that is really important to like collect information in order like that to make sure like or get more information so how so we can Im implement our, so what is the word implement our? To implement. To implement. So new extractories. So, and also investment. So that probably will be helpful. So I think that is, that's it. Okay, perfect. So yeah, there are many ways for us to evaluate the effectiveness of training. Post train quizzes, as we say, tests at the end of the uh, trainings are some a very good way for you to evaluate that. One to one discussions. Yeah, I mean, you can sit down with people and discuss if that was good. What did you like? What can we improve? Service case studies, as we discussed with Yvonne, also very, very important. Certifications, oh my God, that, those are the best. I mean, because you are going to receive a diploma and you are going to be certified. Of course, that is sometimes a little bit, uh, it's not like a test, right? So you need to, to prove something. And uh, yeah, it says that the more data you collect, measurable outcomes. So that means that you, you can measure in different ways the same training. So that is going to be a good idea for us to do. Let's check some words. I don't remember if there are some things here. Ooh, uh -oh. I don't think so. Um, no, not here. Uh, the Kirkpatrick evaluation model. Okay. So the first part is going to be for, let's see. Marcos. Okay. Uh, here part two. During the uh, 19th. 50s. Yeah. The University of Wisconsin professional Donald Kirkpatrick developed the Kirkpatrick evolution model for evaluating training with a simple four level approach. This is one of the most successful models that help you measure the effectiveness of customized corporate training programs. Here are the four levels of measurement and the key indicators to look for at each level. Please continue with the level one. Okay. Level one, reaction. This level measure how learners have react to the training, the relevance and usefulness of the training. User-based questionnaires are taught to learn it before and after the course to collect their feedback on their learning experience. Topics to cover during your discussion. What's the course content relevant and easy to follow? Ask questions about the learning and key takeaways. Discuss the strength and weakness of the program. Understand if the training was able to uh, Accommodate the learner's pace. 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 Sorry? Pace. Pace. Okay, okay. Pace and, and learning the style. At the end of the level one, you should have a good understanding of how well the training was received and determine any gas, gaps in the training content. Good. What did you get from this part? Okay. Um, mm, oh, the, I understand that this person developed um, a, a method to measure the effectiveness of the training. So in the 
first level reaction um, the the uh, it is necessary to collect data about the, the feedback of the employees to receive the train the train so for example we have to talk about with the after and before the train so and for example we have to to talk about if the course was relevant and if we and if they for they it was easy to follow the, the topics and ask questions and talk about the strengths and the weakness of the program and if they have any suggestion for the trainer and understand if the learners uh, were understanding the, the content and so collecting that that the, those that information we can um, evaluate how well the training was received and with that information we can create a i don't know if the if is use a matrix uh, or gaps or just a checklist so we can list the strengths and the weakness of the training very good perfect yeah actually this is the first level of this kirkpatrick um training assessment right so and uh, yeah this uh, i mean what i really like about this one is that this this kind of uh, measurement of the reaction it should be done not only after the train but before so it's a very great idea for you to measure the knowledge or how you do things before the training and then do an assessment after that one so you can compare uh, both how was before and how was after that one and you, then you will be able to to set the expectation on what is going to happen in the productivity right very good so and there are different uh, ways for you to discover that one. So uh, was the course content relevant and easy to follow? That is something that is very important. So everybody understand what is going on in the training. Ask questions about learnings and key takeaways, of course. Discuss the strengths and weaknesses. And uh, the fourth, I believe, is one of the most important, uh, that if the trainer was able to accommodate to the learner space. So not everybody learns at the same, uh, uh, let's say, pace. That is, um, I mean, you would, you need to accommodate to the to the slower learner, so you will be able to uh, be sure that everybody has understood everything in the training. So, let's check some words. What is something that is re uh, relevant? Important. Something important. Maybe. Good. Okay, good, perfect. And what is usefulness? Something useful. Something that is useful, something that you actually are going to use in some things, right? What is, let's see. Takeaways. Like a gift. Like a gift, something that you give to other people, right? So in this case, it's delivered. Uh, what are strengths? Um, I don't know how to say, but... Um... But it's something that in that you are very, um, very capable to do something, that you are good on something. Very good. So, point. Uh, yeah. So things that you are very good at. So things that you do very well. On the other hand, we have weaknesses. What are weaknesses? Some abilities that maybe we don't have like oh well like 
something that maybe is not good about you. Maybe some abilities that you have to improve. Very good. Skills that you need to improve, that is needed to be improved. Very nice. And uh, let's see, pace, what is pace? The rhythm, how the things are going on. Very well. So how fast or how slow something is going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Good. And there is no other by now. Okay, we're going to stop for a little while because we need to check the attendance. And here we go. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Present teacher. Present. Present. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmín Rivas. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas, don't worry. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Okay, so let's continue with the number two. So, level number two is going to be for Maria Alejandra. Okay, uh, level two learning. Measure, measure Me the knowledge, measure. Uh -huh. measure the knowledge and skills gained by learners as a result of the training. The two measures this level, you can use combination of metrics such as us. This is called during and after the training, evaluation of applied, applied learning project in influence or performance cap KPIs. KPI. <laughs> KPIs. <laughs> Course completion, completion, completion and certification, supervisor report and feedback. And this is state of evaluation. You will be able to determine determine if determine. The, determine if the training is meeting is in set objectives. What are the specific skills that can be developed? With this training and the scope, scope, oh. Oh. scope for improvement in content and method of delivery. Good. What did you understand on this one? <laughs> um. In this level, I think that use a different combination of metal or me a uh, metal or uh, or different a uh, combination of training that put um, uh, that evaluate that determine or that allow permitted allow uh -huh. that, uh, that allow to a uh, evaluation of the knowledge for this person and identify 
how the metal is better or you can use better for a specific abilities or skills to need develop um, for to that specific, I don't know, activities or tasks you need to improve and maybe the, the metal to choose a the better or choose a the El, el que más convenga. Uh, the most convenient. Uh, the most convenient for you improve your skills, I think. Okay, very good. So actually the number two is the learning. So the skills that people have gained at the end of the training. So, and it says that you can combine some metrics. So test scores during and after the training. So doing the training is a very good idea to, to score. I mean, to do a little test on steps so you uh, avoid people don't understand or don't know what to do at the very end of the training in the final test. Uh, evaluation and apply of the learning project. That is exactly what Yvonne was telling that sometimes the, you need to present a project uh, after the training. Influence of on performance KPIs. Definitely, uh, I mean, KPIs, remember that are like metrics, uh, like ratios that we will be able to calculate. So we identify if this was actually good. Course completion and certification. I do believe certification is something that is very important for everybody. Supervisor report and feedback. Yes, that's also a good idea. So these are like ways for you to measure the learning uh, of people that attended the training. So let's see some words. What is a gain? The skills obtained. Something you obtained like in this case, like the upgrade of the skills. Very good. What is, let's see, uh, a score? A grade. A grade. Uh -huh. Very good. It's like a grade. Nice. And uh, there is no that I guess. Scope. What is scope? The amplitude uh, of the range. Uh -huh, the range of uh, maybe the view from a uh, from, uh, point. Very good range. And uh, yeah, something like where is going to reach uh, the training, mm -hmm. right? What do you expect for that one? Very good. Number three says level behavior. That is going to be for, let me check. Who has some red? Heidi, could you please help with number three? Hello, Heidi, are you here with us? Not possible, okay. Uh, Roxana Asensio. Okay. Level three, behavior. Understand how the training has impacted the learner's performance and attitude at work. Evaluate how the training has influenced influence the learner's performance influence. and influence, influence. Yeah. influenced, thank you the learner's performance and delivery at work by using a combination of these metals. First assessment questionnaires, informal feedback from priests and, man and man managers, focus group on the job on observation, observation, okay. Actual job performance, key performance indi indicators, Indicators. KP, indicators. K, KPS. KPIs. K, KPIs. 
customer service, comments or complaints. Topics to cover in your assessment include, how has learning been improved, implemented at work? How has learning been implemented at work? Are the learners confident to share the to share their new skills and knowledge with their peers? Good. What, what did peers? you get? Uh, yeah, peers. What is peers? Peers are like co-workers, the people that work oh, with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, in general, the paragraphs uh, mention that. Um, need to um, try to identify uh, what combination uh, is more effective in the in the evaluation uh, so you need to choose the the goal or their or, or no you need to implement the best option about the metals and try to uh, evaluate uh, the training of their results in the best way. Uh, for example, in a focus group, when you are sharing um, your point of view, uh, the rest of the of the uh, person at the group, and maybe um, you need you you can uh, get uh, what person has uh, the um, most clear the information or something like that. In general, uh, try to choose the, the best uh, metals to evaluate if the training has the, the result that you get or, or are looking for. Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah, actually behavior is one uh, of the most important things that you need to measure in the training. As uh, we were discussing before, it's not only to know or know how to do, but also the way that you do things. So the, the acts that you do. So, and it's not that easy sometimes, depending on the situation, depending on what you are, what is the topic for the training, let's say. So, and there are many ways, self-assessment questionnaires, informal feedback from peers and managers, focus group, that is one of the most common, on the job observation, actual job performance. I mean, there are many ways for you to identify if actually the employees, they have changed the way that they have to do something. So let's check some words. What is attitude? How the people uh, act in front of the situation. Very good. Uh, the behavior at work. Very good, the behavior at work. Like when your boss says, you know, we need to stay tonight because there is work to do. So maybe nobody likes it, but if you say, okay, let's do it, that is fine. But if you say, oh my goodness, why didn't say before? Or I don't know, that is not good, right? It's a bad attitude towards that. And what is self-assessment? Something that you do for yourself, but it's for yourself. Exactly. So it's when you evaluate yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, about, of course, the training. I mean, uh, am I able to do this? Did I learn this? Uh, is clear this? Something like that. Uh, what is a focus group, do you know? <clears throat> yes. Uh -huh. uh, it's a, a, a group of people uh, and the main objective is to uh, present maybe a topic and uh, all the people are talking about uh, this topic. And this is for a power have many points of views of this situation. So uh, maybe this 
this situation or, or no, not the situation as, as it, maybe the result of this situation could be a processed in order to uh, take a, a better decision of uh, the implement, implementation of something, okay? Perfect, that is it. So it's when some people from different areas, they get together and they discuss about something specific. So they evaluate if something is going well, if we need to improve things like that. Okay, number four, this is going to be for Fernando Gonzalez. Okay, teacher. Level four, results. Measure the tangible results of the training search as reduced costs, improved quality, faster project completion, increased productivity, employee retention, better marketing leads, increased sales, and higher morale. Key metrics to measure are improved business results, increased productivity and quality of work, employer retention, higher moral, customer satisfaction index. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, what did you get from this one? Uh, this, this, is a, this is a test or a process to, to measure the effectiveness of the training. Obviously companies made an investment uh, in training because they need to improve your their workforce, but if not only deliver a training. So they need to see um, result. And that, that, that is uh, some, that's it's some options for, for measure that results. Very good, that is it. I mean, so whenever you uh, get a training, of course, there should be a change in the results, right? In the metrics, in the productivity, in the sales, definitely should be better. And uh, well, there are many ways for you to measure depending on the training that you deliver to employees or depending on what you want to achieve. Let's check some words. What is something that is tangible? Yeah. Something that you can touch. Very good. Something that you can touch, that you can see, that you are able to, to testify that is, is better, right, in this case. Let's see. Completion, what was that? When you... Uh... Um, how to say, when you uh, reach the, the goal or the, the last, but the, the very last step of, of a main process, okay? Uh, when you ter terminate something, I don't know if it's the correct the word. Yeah, that is possible, yeah. Okay. Perfect, yeah, very good, that is it, nice. And uh, I don't see any other, okay. So how much measurement makes sense? Mm, that is a very good question, right? Let's see, uh, Jose Wilfredo. Okay, um, how much measurement makes sense? Implementing all levels of the curve Patrick model can be an expensive and time consuming process. You don't have to measure everything. Measure only what it takes to sustain a confident decision about the value return of the training. Leslie Allen suggests and in levels as follows, according to, to the type of training and your goals. Level one, reaction for all programs. Level two, learning for hard skills programs. Level three, behavior for strateg strategic programs. Level four, results for programs costing over a 
five five thousand fifty thousand oh fifty thousand uh learn learn new trends emerging practice tailoring consideration and core competencies required of a uh, project management professional with the pmp certification courses okay what did you get from this one uh well um this only explain how many sense about the measure so in the first part it says that if we implement all the the model uh, uh of the quick practice it uh, could be expensive in consuming process so then uh, measure only one thing just then only explain the how how to use the Leslie Allen uh, process like level one what do you have to say they give you some steps to to develop the training session very good yeah actually that is it I mean maybe we don't need to measure everything for uh -huh. all the trainings right because that is too expensive because it's time consuming because people they need to go and go back to the to their jobs so the suggestion is like for the level one for reaction you can do that for all the trainings every training can be measured this one uh yeah, for the level also, two, uh -huh. and also they say that if they they use that model or yeah that model they has to be confident uh, confident about that uh, because uh, said that you don't you don't want to be the well you don't want to you don't want to inform to the trainer to the trainee sorry you don't want to you don't you don't have to inform to the trainee how the training uh, will be like a value for the price mm -hmm. maybe something like that because as a uh, sustaining a confident decision of the value threat of training so this makes sense like you don't have to inform to the trainee uh, what will be the cost of the training or well uh, the the company that is training that is trained you um how to say how to explain that uh well the company don't have to explain well the company don't have to explain how the value is the training for the trainee and the trainee doesn't uh, the trainee doesn't has to know uh, what will return the value to the company okay when will return the value to the company very well that is it so yeah, yeah maybe the main idea is that we don't have to do every process of this for all the training so we need to choose the best option depending on the training that we are delivering yes good um Actually, we're not going to do this because we have a little bit more here. Uh, let's see. So let's check into this one. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Juan Miguel, could you please read this first part? Okay, teacher, sorry. <clears throat> what, is, uh, what is training effectiveness? Training effectiveness measures the impact of training on trainees' knowledge, skills, performance, and the company's role. The training's goals and objectives should be determined before training occurs, allowing this to be clearly and accurate, accurately measured. Okay, what did you get from this? Uh, um, uh, before you have, before you deliver a training for any of your employees, uh, the first thing that you have to do is uh, um, um, 
how, how to say this. Uh, fo focus maybe in one, uh, in a main activity, okay? Or in a main process, not in a main activity, in a main process. Uh, the, the process could be uh, several activities, okay? But in order to uh, evaluate if the training could be the best for the company, uh, first of all, you have to uh, um, to set uh, to set the objectives, okay? And uh, after the training, uh, obviously, you can uh, determine if the objectives were accomplished or not. If the objectives were accomplished, the training was so effective, okay? If, if not, uh, if not, uh, um, the training was ineffective, okay? It's, it, it was maybe a waste of time, okay? Definitely. It's very important, everything. And of course, that is something that you are going to identify from the very beginning, whenever you are going to start thinking of providing a training, everything has to be good, including the, including the evaluation, of course. Okay, so why measure training effectively? Some of these are some things that we checked already, but we're going to repeat because we need to practice, but there are some things that are new on this one. So that's why I brought this one. And uh, let's see. Uh, Number one is going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. To determine if the training benefits employees, perhaps the most important reason for evaluating training effectiveness is to see if it benefits your employees skills and performance. Additionally, it provides them with a clear idea of what they've achieved and the path they need to take to get the next level. Okay. When it comes to learning and development, LED, feedback and encouragement are crucial. Virtually all employees need positive encouragement for the things they've done well and want to know how to improve. Without measurements in place, your employees are likely to feel that their learning at work is purposeless. Purposeless. Purposeless, okay. Evaluating your training effectiveness helps you communicate to you, helps, com, helps you communicate to your employees where the company is today and where it aims to go along with the skills necessary to get there. Consequently, Managers and employees can come together and discuss the results, helping employees feel empowered and part of the broader vision. Good. What did you get from this? Mm, yes, it's very important to know and to empower the uh, all the, the the team, all pe all the people in the same vision because if a company wants to accomplish goals, uh, for example, I, I always compare it with my companies. We have different competitors and now the battle is in prices who gives the cheaper service because the fuel is too high in US, well, around the world. And because of the high price of fuel, people is not working uh, the whole week. Uh, they just are taking some work to do. I mean, our customers, they are uh, reducing the fleet size of trucks they have and some situations that are happening right now is that they are canceling the services. So what our company is um, uh, empowering us to do is not to give up. There is always an opportunity and, and uh, enforce the product 
the features and benefits of the products we offer and the difference with the providers. Uh, and we, they are making us to better understand that the price, there is always a rebuttal for price and let the customers or the prospect knows that what they are paying is for a, a software, a high software that gives them measures for things that they cannot touch. For example, this machine we sell, this product, product we sell, uh, measure the performance on how uh, they drive and let them know if they are at risk to get a ticket, to uh, be subject of, uh, oh, what's the name of this? I don't remember, Auditoria. Auditory. Uh, oh, okay, Auditory for the uh, Department of Transportation and stuff like that. So to, uh, I understand that the upper management is investing because they are training us on different things every day because they want us to go in the next level and to be a powerful sales, uh, sales uh, team around the world, not only in Latin. Okay. Uh, and the measurement is very important. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, actually, everything that you say is very important. I mean, uh, how, how everything impacts in the mm -hmm. business and I mean, because of things like that, you probably will gain a lot of money or lose a lot of customers mm -hmm. and money. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Good, so let's check some words. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Mm -hmm. What is purposeless? Missing purpose, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, something that you, when you don't have purpose. Oh, okay. What is, uh, let's see, there was aims. What is aims? It's a very common word that I've seen, but I don't know how to explain it. Okay. Anybody else's? When you have an eye on, it, on a target? Yeah, very but. Good. Um, a goal, yeah, okay. it's like, yeah, something that you're looking towards so uh -huh. you can achieve uh -huh. that one, right? Very good, okay. Uh, let's see, uh, what is to be empowered with knowledge, and you have all the tools, uh, but also the energy, and um, you have the willingness. Uh, and you feel <laughs> you have all the knowledge and tools on your end to overcome. Very good. So when you are confident because you have okay. everything that you need, right? Mm -hmm. Good, perfect. So number two, it says, uh, well, Marcos is going to read that one actually. Okay, number two. To see the aspect of business performance and determine the training's role. The ultimate goal of all training programs is to boost business performance and see a return on your investment. Changes in productivity, productivity, sales, and profits can all be tracked and measured, and you will hope to see an increase in all of the above. The study has shown that organizations who regularly invest in training perform higher than those who don't, but it must be the right type of training. And it must be meticulous, meticulously tracked on and measured. For example, it is difficult to determine whether the training in question was responsible for an increase in sales or if it was the result of something else. 
like a marketing campaign or a boost in the economy. This is why it's important to examine things like learning transfer and noticeable behavioral, behavioral changes that may have taken place since the training program. Good. What did you get from this? Um, okay. That um, a goal that the company has to set is the determine the the return of the investment. Um, for example, they have to to track um, all the changes since the training was uh, gave um, and determine and measure if 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 it, the trend was responsible of that or if was something else, something external. So they can determine and measure if the invest that they did uh, uh, has a return for that, for, for the company. So it's, it's important. Um, yeah, that's the answer. Okay, perfect. Yes, actually it's it. I mean, remember that this is a financial decision as well. So we need to judge, I mean, if the investment is something valuable for the company. Let's check some words. Uh, what is profit? Benefits. The benefits that we get from the company, from the pro production from the oper operations of the company, right? So let's see. There is no other, I guess. Noticeable, what is that? Okay. Something that you can notice. Very good, something that you can see, that you can actually be aware of, right? And behavioral changes, what is that? Changes who has to, or who are related with a people behavior. Very good, changes that are related to the way the people act, nice. Number three, that is going to be for yourself. Okay. Number three, to uncover issues in the training process and improve it. When you invest valuable resources like time, money, and energy into your training programs, it's essential to measure whether they're working or not. But your intentions for your training will be unique to your business and your long-term goals. This is why you need to define clear objectives in the start, at the start. If you fail to do this, then any results you receive will be, will be meaningless because you don't have a target in sight. Once you know where you're heading and your desired outcome, measuring training effectiveness will help you see if you're on the right track or if you need to make any adjustments. If a particular training program is highly effective, it can be implemented across the board, from executives to managers and new hires. This helps unite the company with shared goals. And if training fails to produce any desirable results, you need to determine why and where this breakdown happens and then make adjustments accordingly. Very good, perfect. So what did you get from this? Mm -hmm. that you can identify it's very important to identify uh, well when you are implementing the training implementing the training you can identify uh, sometimes in for example if you're in the stage or, or, or in level one of the training or in the middle of the training, you can identify if you have to do some uh, adjustments at that level, if it's necessary. And if it's not, you can just move on with the rest of the training. 
And I think that this is very important because at the end, uh, this impact the, the, the results of the whole training. Very good, perfect. Actually, yes, you are right. This is very important. Not only in training, but from any, any process that you are having in the company, you should be able to adjust during the process happening. So the results are better, right? Than the one that you are getting. So you need to analyze and then adjust that. Good. Uh, let's see if there are some words here. Let's see, let's see. Something unique, what is that? Something different? Yeah. Something that is one in, uh, in between something, <laughs> you know? One thing that is different to another. Very good, different from any other. Very nice. It's not, it's not rep repeatable. Something that is not repeatable, very good. Repetitive, okay. What is good? What is meaningless? Without meaning. <laughs> Without meaning, right? So very good. And says where you are heading. What is the meaning of heading? On the way. On the way to yeah. something. Moving on, right? So, like leading something. Leading, yeah, very good. And I don't think there is. Oh, well, breakdown. What is breakdown? Uh, maybe uh, it could be. Related to downtime? No? No. It's not okay, related no. to downtime. No, okay. The, the downtime is the time who, uh, downtime is the time where a thing or a system is not working properly, okay? The breakdown is the, the failure. Yeah, very good. So okay. it's like, well, in this case is something like a change, right? When you are expecting something to happen. And uh, yeah, that would be like break down something like, check into that one. Um, let's see the other part is going to be for, let's see, Yvonne. Okay, how to measure training effectiveness? Measuring training effectiveness can be Conducted through one to one discussion, service and questionnaires, post training quizzes, assessment, and examinations. Before training commences, it's essential to decide how you will measure and assess the data you collect. Here are five prevent evaluations models that are most often trusted by companies today. Number one, Keith Patrick's for level training evaluation model, the Philip ROI model, Kaufman five levels of evaluation, Anderson's model of learning evaluation, Sumati, versus formative evaluation. That is it. This... So what, what do you get from this part? Okay. Uh, we need to measure what is the impact or the effic effectiveness for every training that you get. So you before uh, uh, the training start, you have to plan or uh, select what is the best way to measure that effectiveness. So you have to decide. And in the last part, we was talking about, uh, for example, uh, exams or projects uh, 
and, and that can um, get a better idea about uh, the if the training is um, it's the correct to improve the skill of employees or the improve the knowledge uh, or the can improve the job of their employees or the group of employees. And in this part, is talking about five ways of five, model, five models uh, to measure that effectiveness, but I don't know what uh, is every of those are in this part. Okay, yeah, this is just the names of the of the evaluation models. The one that we checked already is the Kirkpatrick's four level training evaluation model, of course. And uh, yes, there are many ways for us to evaluate. So we discussed that before, definitely. I don't think we have any new work here. So this is like the levels that we already checked. And let's see. Yeah, these are like examples. We can check the examples actually. Uh, but it's very, very similar. Let me see. Behavior. Yeah, this is exactly what we checked in the other one. Okay, this is the other one. Okay, so this one, the best practices, and the number one is going to be for Raymond. Oh, uh, you here with us, Freeman? Okay, not possible. Let's see. Danny, could you please help us? Yeah, sure. And have a reasonable number of KPIs. Be selective when making your choice. The more measure you include, the more information you'll have to work with, but don't overwhelm yourself with too many. Okay, what did you get from this? Um, when, uh, when you are going to set the KPIs to measure, uh, well, the something um, you, to try to don't, don't make too much, or too many, um, too many uh, KPIs because uh, you're going to lose yourself <laughs> among them. <laughs> that is true. I mean, you need to, you don't have to measure everything. You, we, we checked that in the other article that, I mean, yeah, it's good to measure, but not everything because you're going to have too much information and that is not good. Good, number two, uh, Maria Alejandra. Okay. Identify your KPI. KPIs, uh -huh. KPI before the development phrase or your training. Knowing what you want to measure first will enable you do select the most stable measuring effectiveness method. You may want to consult with key stakeholders first to know which metrics are most important to them. Okay, what do you get from this? Identify what uh, is the most relevant to know for a metric, but you, uh, for you, um, have a case for that, um, that measure for that business, or maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, the important part is that you need to identify which is going to be the KPI that you are going to use to measure that one before. 
before you actually deliver the training, definitely you need to understand, you need to, to know not only the needs and the methods, but also the KPI for you to measure if the training was productive. And uh, let's see what is suitable. Anybody? Appropriate. Or okay, very good. The appropriate, very nice. Uh, key stakeholders, what is that? The group of people that have some kind of Eastern interest in something. Okay, very good. So like the, the ones that run the business, right? So yeah, parties, parties interest, interest parties. Very good, perfect. Okay, number three is going to be for Roxana. Okay. Plan your data collection schedule in the design phase of your training. Now, when you want to measure effectiveness and how you will do and how you will do this and build and build in and build it into your training timeline to ensure your state organ organizer the manage stakeholder expect expectations good what did you get mm -hmm. let me see Maybe uh, you need to um, have a specific time to uh, get or looking for a result or, um, well, I imagine that uh, when uh, someone is uh, develop a training, uh, maybe uh, that uh, process have a timeline and need to um, adapt a program and evaluate the result at the end. And that paragraph, that paragraph is talking about that. Okay, perfect, thank you. And yeah, this is related to time, right? You need to schedule everything, not only the training itself, but uh, when you're going to plan, how you're going to measure, what time you're gonna measure everything. So. Definitely that is very important. So you can be sure that everything is going to go well. Number four is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Okay, customize your evaluation framework. It may not be necessary for you to measure all four Greek Patrick model syllables. Plus, this can be a lengthy and expensive process. I spend time conducting your training needs analysis and choose the training effectiveness evaluation model that best suits those. For example, you may find that it only makes sense for you to measure the second and fourth levels of the Greek Patrick model. Do what you need to, to make a confident informing decision on the effectiveness of your training. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, well, like this is about the training in this part is like customized, maybe this mean like making your own uh, framework evaluation 
and says that plus this can be lastly an expensive process. Uh, in this part, it mentioned that is as one of expensive process, and also you invest time for do this kind of model. Um, then is this is choose the train effective evolution model the best suits loss. You may find it along with me sense of your measurements. Well, um, make confident and just those is like a part of the of the of the steps of kind of models to personalize the, the framework. Okay. So, I don't know how to explain this part. Uh, don't honest. worry. That is fine, no worries. So yes, it means that actually you need to customize your evaluations, the way that you are gonna do it. So, and uh, you have a method, you have the training, and uh, of course you, you can adapt. You can take some pieces of information from some methods, but you can do it yourself. You can uh, adapt to your needs depending on the training and depending on the on the uh, results that you want from that. So that would be. It. Let's check some words. What is lengthy? Something bigger. Something that is long, right? In time. Long. Yeah. Very good. And let's Possibly, see. huh? Um, over long. Yeah, too long, right? So it's mm -hmm. what's on. What is something that makes sense? Mm, something that is um, logical. Logical, very good. Something that is like this should be the way, right? Good. I don't see any other words, so let's check number five, Fernando. Hello, Fernando, are you here with us? Not possible. Okay, uh, Roxanne. Yes. Number five, please. Okay. <clears throat> Act on your feelings. Findings. Findings, thank you. Perhaps the most important practice for measure training effectiveness is to make sure you put sure you put your findings into findings. practice. Findings into practice. That means making change and improvements were necessary and being quick to take actions. What did you get from this? Mm, what is findings? Finding is something that you find. For example, imagine that you are investigating about something. The results are the findings. Oh, okay. Uh, well, um, let me see. Um, maybe uh, it refers to uh, be some things by yourself. So looking for some... Um, complement about the training or information about that and try to evaluate uh, both the, the training information and the complement that the person is fine or um, maybe uh, when the employee or the person are looking for a, uh, another extra information uh, that's improved their result of the training. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Oksan. Uh, yeah, this is related to whenever you provide a training, of course, there is a feedback, right? The trainer, for example, or the, the company that is delivering the training might come and tell you, or we identify that this person knows, but these other people, they don't know what to do. Uh, also, 
you will be able to measure in ways that you will identify the best way to continue another training or to adapt the training itself to what they are going to actually do in their position. So it's a very good thing. Maybe one of the most important things is, is that one. So you can act, so you can take decisions and uh, depending on what is happening in the training and, or what are the results from the training and the production or operation itself. So that will be it. So it refers to feedback. Yeah, this is about evaluation. So whenever you evaluate and then you find some results, you will be able to, well, then uh, do the changes in the processes or in the training or many other things. Okay. Uh, let's see, there is no word here that I would like to check into that one. Okay, the last one is going to be for, let's see. Let's see. Jose Rivas. Okay, so over to you, right? Yep. So training centers uh, on improving employees' overall performance and therefore uh, boosting uh, the success and result of your businesses, evaluating your training's effectiveness, help you understand whether your goals have been met and shows how to improve, whether you choose to discontinue our training or drum, drum, dramatically change an order is viral, viral to continually notice what's working and what's no and respond and continue yeah please okay remember this is no one of event to sum up measuring training effectiveness should be a continuous process and enabling your employees to feel supported and empowered at work. A big budget doesn't always ensure that learning and development are effective, but measuring effectiveness and acting accordingly will set you up for success. Okay, what did you get from this? Let's see. I think that, so that is that uh, evaluating the training. So we can understand, so what the goals had been set or what the goals had, had been met and, and show a, 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 re, a really nice improvement and also choose a, like, a, let's see. Let's mm, choose like a another world in order to step in in a new train. I think so. Okay. Yeah, I mean uh, this is something the way that we need to check whenever we are uh, training or delivering training. So, and uh, it's vital to check what's working and what's not and act about that one. And one of the best way for a company to act is to deliver the training and to measure what's going on on that one. Good. So we are gonna finish. Before we finish, is there any question before we? No teacher. Okay, so then we're gonna check the attendance. Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Lesson teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josue Garcia Martinez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. 
Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. And the one I want for today is for Irene Azucena. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you. I hope you have a very good night and rest very well. See you tomorrow and Dream in English. Okay, very good. Good night to everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Should I have a question for the good platform? Night. Of course, you can stay at the end and we can uh -huh. check. Good. Okay. Good. Yes, because I see Irene is not here. <laughs> okay, you can take advantage, of course. <laughs> I'm going crazy with this platform. Really? Mm. <laughs> Okay, the, the question I have is, because Heidi had the same, I, I guess I thought she was staying too, but uh, I was talking to her before, uh, is with the, uh, is all that 2.2 homework. I just have good the last two, I'm going crazy here, I don't know. I've been trying copying the test, uh, putting all the, um, let me copy what I have. Okay. This is the one. This is the two. Uh, this is the, And I've been trying to follow the structures, but. So the ones that are not correct are number three, four, five. Three in the platform? I mean, the ones that you are not able to get correct, are, which ones no. are those? Uh, these are the, the ones that I'm in the chat. I'm putting the one, two, three, the four. I'm copying because I want you to check if I have a mistake, believe me, I've been looking for all of them. And this is this is the first part. This is a number five. Okay, this is for the first part. The second part of the 2.2, I just have good the number four and the number five. Number one, two, three of the second part. Mm -mm. Okay, so what about the first part? Everything is fine with the first part? No, I'm, if you can take a look to the to the chat. Ah, okay. So I let was me just... copying what I have, what okay. I brought. This uh, is and... number one. Aha, uh -huh. not only there are problems with the children, but also. So it should be there are problems. Not only, the, yes, I have. Not only there are problems with the children, but yep. also. But not only are... it's not at the beginning. Is there are only problems, not only with the children, but also with their parents. Mm -hmm. So the first one should be. There, there are, are problems. Oh. So you, you start, there are problems, not only with the children, but also with. I their also parents. try with in that way. Let me, I also was doing that and believe me, it's, okay. it's not work, not also with the children, but and, and also I took off the comma, let me try right now, let's see. You can copy and paste. No, it's not, what, let me copy what I, 
what I'm, uh, maybe if, oh my God, I don't know. If sometimes the platform, we know that if it's not, we don't need to add the, the period. Exactly. Uh, yeah, with this I kind of exercise, I know All that. of this, no and, and that is what I'm, okay, let me, okay. This is the way I grow now with the correction, the number one, take a look what I have grown. There are problems not only with the children, comma, but also there are problems with their parents. Is that the correct way? Uh, well, let me just check. Uh, there are problems not only with the children, no comma. I didn't use a comma for that one. Okay, let me try, let's see. Oh my God. No, it's still, I took off the comma and it's still showing that it's grown. Okay, let me then show you what I have here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I have it. Okay. So on the first one, I got this. There are problems not only with the children, and no comma, of course, mm -hmm. but also with their parents and period. Okay, let me, I got it in this way. There are problems not only with the children's no comma, but also, uh, so I don't need to write there are, but also with their parents. But also exactly with their parents, uh, period. It's because I was following the structure. Uh, uh, not only noun. Uh, okay. But also, let me take off. So I'm repeating the, There are problems. Uh -huh. I got the idea now. Okay. Let me. <laughs> Is it still showing me incorrect? Let me let, let me verify. There are problems not only not only ever. Right? Not only, uh -huh. Not only with the children, no comma, but also with their parents, period. The only uppercase there is at the beginning there, the T from there. <gasps> oh my God, I think. You got it, good. <laughs> uh -huh. Now the second one I have, I put it on the chat. Not only she, no. no. She uh -huh. not only writes plays mm, I for television, but also acts in movies in no comma. She not only writes with S, right? She has. Uh, she not only writes because it's a third person. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, play Plays for television, for no television. comma. Uh -huh. But also acts uh -huh. in movies and period. So it's not necessary to repeat the subject. No. Oh, I was confused right there. Okay, let's see. Wow, it's great. Okay, now the third one I have. So my mistake is that I'm starting with not only. Ah, okay. I guess because the third one I got it, not only I sent to him. A, oh, I do, I'm sorry, I didn't saw, uh, see the screen. Okay, I not only sent him many. Okay, let me try. I not only send him many letters, no comma, right? Mm -hmm. But also mm -hmm. try it. Try. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. And I growth I. Okay. But also try to telephone him, period. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any... No. Let me take a look at how do you have, I not only sent him. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Just give me one moment. I guess my mistake is right there. 
Mm. I not only sent two, I got to him. Ah, okay, send him. Why I cannot use two, two? Because he's addressing. But look at the, uh, here, I sent him, says here, in the top, in the original. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Send him many, let me try. Wow, it's correct. I see the light now. Okay, the number four. So you have it. She not only was upset. Okay, she not only was upset. I was, I had not starting with only, not only. She was, no. She not she, only. She not, okay. She not only was upset. Just give me one minute. Okay, she not only was upset, no comma, right? Uh -huh. but, but also, also was oh, angry. Oh, that is a mistake. This is a mistake. I don't know if you are going to use it with also, but I had to write Oslo. I don't know why. Let me try also. Let me try also. Also, uh -huh. was angry. Angry, okay. No. Uh -huh. <gasps> My God, so. So you have to write this incorrect. Oslo. Uh -huh. Okay. Hey, let me just take a look. Oslo, my God. <laughs> that happens here in this part. Mm. This platform, I don't know why, but it's sometimes too complicated. Every course I've been doing here, no, it's not shaming, it show a changing okay let me just take a look how do you have she not only was upset okay but and aslo mm -hmm. <laughs> oh she was i must use she no no ah, okay no. so my mistake is that i'm using the subject in the two in the two sentences yeah in the two sentences so is this yes i got confused maybe that way how the not no it's not changing let me try maybe i have something incorrect okay she not only was upset no s okay no comma but aslo was angry yes, what I have no. also uh, angry no was uh, okay Ah, okay, because it's like linking, right? Yeah. The idea, got it, okay. Got it, okay. And the next one I have, my mistake is that I started with not only, so it should be, uh, they, let me take a look. They not only need food, okay, not only need food, but also, Need and I grow no. day again. Uh -huh. No need, but also medicine. You don't have to use need. Again. Ah, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and the and the and the and the other one. Oh, I got all of it. Okay. Now the ones for nor. Let me show you. So let me. In the second part, he can neither speak. I got he, uh, neither can. Okay, so it's he can. And I have a doubt here with the verb because I know that should be in third person, right? No, but we are using use can. can. Uh -huh. ah, okay, so he can neither speak nor write English. Mm -hmm. And period. And period. Okay, in English, I also was trying with uppercase and lower. Let me try. My God, okay, it's good. And the other one, the other one I got, let me take a look. You have, he neither ate the cake, I, I got, he neither ate himself. Uh, he So the correct is, he neither ate the cake. And then, he neither ate the cake himself, okay, no comma, nor let others. No, nor allowed others. You don't say allowed others, Dios mío. 
yeah, this is kind of strange, but that's, I was trying different ways, but that is the way that it, it took it. So okay. this, is, uh, this is strange. I'm sorry about that one, but that's the way, mm -hmm. huh? Others to eat it. Allow, nor allow the others to. To, uh, to eat it. Eat it. Quiero ver cómo lo tiene. Eat it en presente. Yeah. Yo lo puse en pasado. No, that is in present. Uh, to eat it. Second. Okay. Me quedé tan frustrada en esto. <laughs> okay, let's see. There it goes. And the, the last one that I have incorrect is the number three. I have you should neither meet, meet him. Uh, no, no le puse him. Okay. You should neither meet him nor, okay. Not talk to, y ahí porque se repite. <laughs> Well, in this case, yes, it's, it's something that you should use. It should be repeated, yeah. Uh -huh. And, and I don't have to use top two. Top, uh, top two, uh -huh. top two, yeah. top two. Okay. Yes, because I have talked to him. Uh, let me see. And I was... Oh, thanks, God, is correct. Okay. I was okay. going crazy. Thank you, teacher. And let me check uh, the rest. So as far as I remember today, we need to accomplish until two point, the half of 2.8, right? Uh, today is, yes, until that one, yeah. That's ah, the okay. one. And the, for next week, it will be competition for the Milton, right? Yeah, around Wednesday. Ah, okay, okay. Now I, I feel happy right now. Thank okay. you very much, teacher. It's a <laughs> pleasure. Helping. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.